Well, 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 here's Mama Bloom's brood. Closer and closer comes Sarah's wedding day. Here she is in the Bloom living room with Mama, as Mama says. Sally, I tell you, make out a list. I've made so many lists, now I'm dizzy. They'll make one more. What's the list this time? We'll, uh, well, we'll put down who we're going to send invitations to. Let's start with the A's. Mr. and Mrs. Emmanuel Zeff. Zeff doesn't start with an A, Ma. Put them down anyhow, I'm afraid we'll forget them. And then the Finks. We gotta have her. We went to her daughter's reception. Ah, oh, that was a swell reception. Fruit punch and that Italian ice cream, spitoni. Spumoni, mother. Oh, spumoni. <sighs> the Finks must be very rich. <laughs> the new house they're building has got for every bedroom a bathroom, just like a hotel. They must be awful dirty people. There's a bathroom for every bedroom in all smart. Smart homes, Ma. Smart? You mean stylish? I mean smart. How can a house be smart? What can you do, add up numbers, play the piano? That's the word they use nowadays. Yeah, that's the trouble here in America. There's too many voids. People keep talking half the time. The people they're talking to don't know what they're saying, and the other half the time they don't know what they're saying themselves. Ah, people talk too much. Oh, let's stick to the list, Yeah, Ma. yeah. Now put down Grandma and Uncle Morris. Yeah, and I guess we have to send an invitation to your father's Uncle Ike. Will he come? Sure, he'll come. We'll send him an invitation, and Pop will send him a clean shirt. And he'll be the first one here. He'll talk loudest, stay longest, and eat twice as much as those who bring presents. You don't like him, hmm? Well, I don't dislike him. But I just wish he'd get some kind of a job in the middle of Australia <laughs> in a place where he couldn't send letters. What's he doing now? Yeah, what does he ever do? Well, didn't Pop back him in business last year? Papa's backed him in business a dozen times. And such crazy businesses he picks up. What kind of crazy businesses? <sighs> Things I never heard of he starts manufacturing. All I know is he comes to Papa with a long story about how this time everything's going to be different. Oh. Hmm. Papa gives him the money, then maybe a year later we hear a new story. You can just imagine even his own relatives won't give him a job. And when a man can't work for his own relatives, then he must be a loafer. Well, then why do we have to have him? Uh, you know, Papa, I could leave out every cousin I have, even the nice ones. And by Papa, it'd be all right. But if I leave out one 55th cousin in Papa's family, He'd holler like a stuffed cow. Well, I guess we better put him down. While we're speaking of cows, put on your Aunt Minnie. <laughs> Sally, have you seen your Aunt Minnie lately? No. <laughs> I met her last week in the butcher shop, and you could have knocked me over with a sledgehammer. Why? What was the matter? I don't like to talk about anybody, especially a relative. But your Aunt Minnie is so fat that I hardly recognize her. Is she really that stout? Not stout. Fat. Stout is like me. That is when you're stout and still keep eating. Ah, I'll bet she's so fat she has to live in a double house. Did you say anything to her? Hardly a word. What do you call hardly a word? Just what I mean. What business is it of mine if she wants to get fat? What did you say, Ma? Oh, all I said was, uh, my goodness, Minnie, I hardly knew you. I bet you gained 200 pounds oh, since I last oh. saw you. You look terrible. You should go on a duet. Diet, Mother. Duet means two people. Then I mean a duet. She was two people. Oh. And when I think of her poor husband, such a little shrink. You mean shrimp. What's the difference? A fish is a fish. Poor man, he always was thin. Now he's skinny. <laughs> they must look fine going out together. 
If we have her, remind me, we have to get extra food. We'll never get this list done if we stop and discuss each person as they come up. And it's very important that it be done today. The invitations to an engagement reception are supposed to be out at least a week before the date mentioned. And it's only six days, so they have to go out tonight. We'll get it finished, don't worry. Uh, put down Sydney's father and mother. I got them down. They're at the top of the list. Scratch them out from the top of the list and put them down lower. Put our relatives down for you. That's silly. Whole business is silly. There's only one thing I'm glad of. What's that? I'm glad I've got two daughters to get married instead of three. Why? Papa, he read me somewhere in the paper that every toyed marriage in the United States ends in a divorce. I've got only two daughters, so we're safe. I, I don't know what's coming over people. They meet on a Monday, Tuesday they get married. Wednesday they have a fight, Thursday they get a divorce. And Friday they go away to the country to look for a new husband. Oh, I don't think it's quite as bad as that. It's bad enough. Remember now, you're getting married to Sydney, but no divorces. We're not millionaires. We're respectable people. Lots of millionaires are respectable people, too. Don't tell me I've been to the movies. Those millionaires... Please, Ma, now stick to the list. We've been working at it almost all afternoon, and we've only got six names down. All right, all right. Put down Papa's cousin in Chicago. The bald-headed one in the hair restorer business. What's his home address? Send it to the store. He'll open it quicker. He'll think it's a check. All right. I got him down. Who else? Boydie Rosine. You don't have to be so careful with her. Send her the invitation with the finger marks. You know, the one Papa looked at. Who else? Mrs. Rifkin. Mr. and Mrs. A. Lincoln Cohen. Yes. Miss Gwendolyn Ginsburg. Mm -hmm. Mr. and Mrs. Beverly Horowitz. Mr. and Mrs. Pierre Pont Rosenberg. Wait a minute. You're calling them off too fast now. Mm -hmm. First, it's too slow. Now, it's too fast. Now, now go ahead. I've caught up with you. Mr. and Mrs. Irving McKenna. <laughs> That's a fine name for a kosher butcher, McKenna. <gasps> Uh, I almost forgot the main one. Sydney's Uncle Mo, the Honorable Mo Schiff, being racketeer. <laughs> but he's not racketeer, sir. He isn't a racketeer, Mo. He's in the wine business. Oh, sacrilegious wine. Not sacrilegious, Mo. Sacramental. Send him an invitation. Maybe we'll be lucky he won't come. Why don't you want him to come? As far as I'm concerned, he could come, but Papa don't like him. Why not? He and Papa had an argument when we came over from the old country 20 years ago. And they haven't spoken to this day. What was the argument about? I asked Papa last week the same question. He said he couldn't remember, but that Mo Schiffbein was wrong. If Papa don't remember, how does he know that Mo Schiffbein was wrong? Don't you know yet, Sarah, that anybody who argues with your Papa is always wrong? If they're right, they're wrong. If he comes here, what will Papa do? They'll probably have an argument. After 20 years? To Papa, 20 years is like an hour in an argument. Only yesterday, he reminded me of something I said to him four years before we was married. Did you really say it, Ma? How do I know? Not that I do much talking. But how can I remember what I said 20 years ago when I was a silly girl and had no more sense than you got? That isn't fair. I don't think I'm so dumb. Mm -hmm. Now you just proved you ain't smart. How's that? The minute you're finding out that you don't know so much, that's the beginning of becoming smart. I give up. Let's stick to the invitation. All right. What was the name of the lady who lived across the hall from us when we lived up in Claremont Avenue? The pretty one with the wart on her nose? Oh, you mean Mrs. Barstein? No, but put her down, too. I forgot it. Why do you have to put her down? Her husband buys goods from Papa. Well, I'm putting down all of Sydney's relatives, and he gave me a whole list. How many are there? Uh, Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven? That's a lot of relatives. Oh, it's nice to have a lot of relatives and friends. Sure, it's nice to have a lot of relatives and friends. But the day you're married, you'll find out that in-laws are neither relatives or friends. They are peculiar animals. What way? You know, they... Well, I don't see how you figure that out. Mm -hmm. Wait until after you're married. I won't have to tell you. You'll find out for yourself. Oh, I don't think so. Now you're talking silly. From the beginning of the boil, there have been two big choices on a young married couple. Having no money and having in-laws. But the voice to these is having in-laws. Well, Sydney and I are going to be different. You'll find out. How will I find out? From the day you're married, you'll find out that according to your in-laws, whatever you do is wrong. If you get up in the morning and have breakfast with your husband, you should have stayed in bed and not bothered with him. If you stayed in bed, you should have got up and had breakfast with him. If you make him stay home in the evening, you don't want the poor man to have any amusement. If you make him go out in the evening, you have no sympathy for our poor man who worked hard all day. Is it really as bad as that? <laughs> wait, wait, that's just the beginning. If you live near your mother-in-law, she'll come over and run your house for you. And if you live a long distance away, then she'll say you just do it so she can't come over and visit her son. But you and Grandma Bloom get along all right. Mm -hmm. After 22 years, you start to get used to it. Well, it doesn't sound very attractive to me. <laughs> 
Sarah, the best way would be to marry an orphan. And even then, after the wedding, some relatives would pop up. Don't you think there's exceptions, Ma? I don't say there ain't exceptions. All I say is, I never met them. Well, we'll never get this list finished. At least you can do any time. Good advice like this comes only now and then. Not that you'll pay any attention to it. Oh, of course I'll pay attention to it. <laughs> Darling, don't talk foolish. Who pays any attention to it, wife? That's why everybody don't mind giving it away. It always comes back to you without being used. Put down the landlord. We got to send him an invitation. It ain't in the lease, but we got to send him. Okay, he's down. Uh, you got down Sam, Papa's mm -hmm. partner and his wife? Yes. And his brother Nate? Mm -hmm. And Nate's wife's sister's husband? Oh, oh, yes. And Nate's wife's sister's husband's uncle in Brooklyn? Mm -hmm. His brother Bernard in Atlanta and his brother Dave in the fish business. Mm -hmm. Put them down. I hope they don't come, but put them down. <laughs> They're down. Why does anybody want to go in the fish business? 400 businesses that don't smell... If the man has to go in the fish business. I don't know if we're going to have enough invitations, Ma. Don't worry, we'll have more printed. Not printed, engraved. It's the same thing. Engraving is stock-up printing. Can't you tell the difference? Sure, I can tell the difference. You rub over your finger, and if you don't feel anything, it's printing. If you feel something, it's engraving. I always do that when I get an invitation. Can you think of anybody else? Uh, I think we thought of everybody. Ah, wait a minute. Put down all the ladies in the bridge club. Those we got to have. Oh, no. I, I tell you, this getting married is a very tiresome business. Especially when an engagement party is on a Thursday. Well, why didn't you have it on a Friday like I suggested at first? I wouldn't have it on a Friday. I'm supercilious. You mean superstitious, Ma? Superstitious. I mean it's bad luck. Well, don't tell me you believe in that. No, I don't believe in it. But why take any chances? Oh, it's perfectly ridiculous. Ain't anybody taking enough chances when they get married without making it on a Friday when it's voice bad luck? <laughs> Sounds very funny coming from you, Ma. Why? Well, you and Papa have been married for over 20 years now, and you're still very happy, aren't you? Sure, we're happy. But men like your father, you don't find hanging on pool tables today. There's just as good fish in the sea as have ever been caught. Maybe so. But until you catch them, you can't find out. And sometimes after you catch them, it's too late. Well, you certainly are a funny one. To hear you talk, the whole thing's a lot of baloney. No, Sally, the whole thing is very fine and very lovely. It's only the people in it that ain't so good. There's nothing so nice as a happy family. But there's nothing so sour as the other kind. Well, what do you advise me to do, Ma? This world, a woman hasn't got much choice. How's that? She either gets married and gets a mother-in-law, or she stays single and becomes an old maid. Mm -hmm.